Okay. You think you're gonna be able to contact me every day? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Would there be signal? Yeah, definitely. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> you'll see. Yeah. الحمد لله على السلامة وين بتحب تروح؟ مخيم برج براجنة لو سمعت تكرم عينك تكرم عينك بس لو ممكن على بيروت تعمل تور ببيروت؟ اه من عيوني تكرم عينك هلا فيك My name is Pietro Stefanini and this is my journey it may have begun at the City University of London, hearing the words apartheid, colonization, oppression. It may have begun with my readings and study of the Palestinian struggle, words from Shaima about their dispossession and loss. So this year, as some of you might know, it marks 70 years of the Palestinian popular resistance against the ongoing process of dispossession colonization and ethnic cleansing. But my journey actually begins with Ahmed. It is Ahmed's words that hit home. Welcome, nice to see you. Shukran. 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 People always ask you, what are your first impressions? I don't know. Perhaps I'm too nervous to take anything in. It is a place I would hurry to leave. Electrical wires and rain mixing, I remember that. Hello, Marhab. Marhab. 
الصحه على كيف الحال الحمد لله ان شاء الله مبسوط يا أنا مرحبا اسمي بيترو عبد الله مصطفى شحادي من الكويتات شرفنا فلسطيني شرفنا زيدك شرف يا هلا تفضلوا شكرا تفضل تفضل اهلا وسهلا اهلا وسهلا اهلا مرحبا جدي اهلا وسهلا اهلا اهلا حبيبي اهلا وسهلا كم السلام شكرا كيف الحال؟ الحمد لله الحمد لله كل شيء كيف صحتك؟ بخير؟ تمام 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 ان شاء تمام. الله تمام هاي صرفة وصرفة الحجة بعرفه كمان الفاضل المرحوم ابني كمان انتقل لرحمة الله عمره كان 48 سنة فشمعوا كبد السلام عليكم تفضلي عليكم السلام ورحمة الله بنتي فاتن عرفي على حالك نعم فاتن نبيلة نبيلة عليكم السلام نبيلة تمام آية السلام عليكم كيفك تمام آمني فين فاتن يا حفاتن سيدة الدلك شو هاي شو بس شكرا شكرا اهلا شكرا يا مرحبا اهلا اهلا وسهلا اهلا وسهلا نورها اهلا الحجه تاعتي بالمستشفى بالعنايه الفائقه واذا الله بخير اسمه الله بتمنى كنت تكون هي الحجه معانا هون وبتحكيك عن قضية فلسطين ورزق فلسطين وتراث فلسطين يعني اه في ناس بخافوا يبعثوا اذن مثلا على لبنان لا بخافوا ايه ذيس از جود بوينت شي ستيلينج مي ذات سم سم بيبول اوكي ذا بريتش بيبول سم اوف ذيم ميبي ذي افريد تو سند ذير تشيلدرنز اور ذير تو ليبانون Your parents, mm. it's okay. My okay. parents, yeah. My girlfriend, yeah. Uh, she's uh, scared a bit. Scared. Yeah. No need to be scared. Yeah. Yeah. The family stay long enough to make me feel welcome. Yeah. It is a small place to have as home, but it is a home. And Hajj Abdullah insists to give me his room to sleep in. Hello, <laughs> Sahlan. هاي غرفتك هون اها بتنام هون يا رب احمد احمد معك في معك بشكير؟ امم نعم معك؟ اوكي معك ها بتحط لي اياه هون او بتحطه هون عند Okay. Um, where do I start? So I'm in uh, I'm in the room where I'll be staying for for the next uh, seven nights, and uh, and yeah, just I just brush my teeth, and I realize that the 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 water is salty. And uh, they actually have to use uh, bottled water because uh, they don't get uh, uh, proper water. Everyone uh, was so upbeat and uh, and very talkative. Lots of people coming in and out of the house. Must have seen at least 30 different people. Normal evening for them, although when you start kind of zooming, in, zooming out and thinking where I am in a refugee camp with uh, with uh, Hajj, who's who's uh, been been here for seventy years, 
and uh, and he's been a refugee almost all his life. Kind of feels feels strange that uh, that is so permanent for him to be in in a camp and being a refugee. لما كنا بكويكات كان إلي جد اسمه عبد الله وعنده طرش معزة يعني وغنم كان يزرع فول ويزرع من أشياء هالبيت يعني حنطة قمح بس الفول اللي عنا إحنا بفلسطين ويزرعوه هو نفس اللون هيك على خضار بس خضار عنا بيكون زاهي أكتر لأنه بعل نزرع احنا بعد ما نسقي مي ما عندنا مي بعد يطلع بقينا نزرع مارس كبير يعني شيء 10 دلم انا اصلا ما بتذكر شيء منيح يوم خلقت كل حربات وكل حصار كان مخيمات واجى حرب الاجتياح يعني طفولتي كلها كانت بالحرب انا يعني اكثر اوقاتنا كانت بالملاجئ حتى المدارس يعني ندرس شهرين ويصير في حرب بالمخيمات نروح المدرسه يطلعونا صف يعني كانت ماساه هون بالمخيم يعني احنا ما عشنا طفولتنا انا ما بتذكر عيش طفولتي هاش متى طلعت من فلسطين؟ احنا طلعنا بال 48 طلعنا على منطقة اسمها أبو سنان على ترشيحة من ترشيحة على المنصورة جعد في قلب المنصورة بدي آكل As he brings me to the nursing home, Hash Abdullah starts to tell me about his escape from Palestine when he was a boy and the beginning of his life in the diaspora. عبد الناصر يا جمال ويا أهار الاستعمار فيك محققنا الأمال ولما غايك وحبتنا here, for a brief pause in time, the people of the diaspora show me that when they are together, they can relive a life taken from them so violently in 1948. Around the others, Hajj Abdullah shares the rest of his story. <laughs> قال شو مالك يا ابني؟ قلت له جوعان بدي اكل. قال خصص جوا. جاب خمس ست رقبه وحط لي اياهن وغرف بالقلاي، احنا بنعرفها القلاي شو هي. من قلب الطنجره مجدره حمراء. بتذكرها والله. قال يا ابني هاي الخبزات وهي المجدرات ما تاكل هون يا ابني. كل بارض لبنان قبل ما يكمل الطوب. احنا قلت لابوي هيك استعجل ابوي واختي نزلنا على ارض بيت الشعب بلبنان ما وصلنا على هالارض وقعدنا والا دبابات اسرائيليه تطوعت تطوعت هاي هاي النكبه هاي هاي نكبتنا بال 48 يا بيتا تفضل كيف عملت فينا اسرائيل تفضل كيف عم بتشردنا وبتطلعنا in horror, I listen to the stories of Nakba, the catastrophe, 
told to me by people who were children then and have lived with their tragedy for 70 years. Hedge Abdullah and his friends tell me the Zionists coming from Europe committed these massacres, these indiscriminate killings of innocent, unarmed people, not the native Jewish people who had lived side by side with the Muslims and Christians for over 2,000 years. It was the Zionists who stole the Palestinian homeland and made the people of the Nakba homeless. <laughs> كروت الأعاش اللي اللي عطونا إياها إن نوقف بالدور الصفوف لحتى نأخذ ال المونة الحمامات الحمامات كانت تبعد عن بيوتنا كتير إحنا صغار نطلع بالشتاء إن المدارس كانت بالشادر المي نروح نصب بالليالي لحتى إن نزق نقلة المي Yet, despite their pain, there is a hope here that has grown in depth and belief and strength every year of the 70 years these people have held it. <laughs> يعني رغم كل سنين وطالت سنين سبعين سنة راح نرجع على فلسطين ومتأملة نرجع على فلسطين بإذن الله وبعدني محتفظ فيه لحد هلا The key of return symbolic and I realize of a sense of purpose and belief we do not always have بيوتنا تهدمت حياتنا كلها تهدمت وخربوا حياتنا ومحتفظين بمفتاحنا لأن عنا أمل بإذن الله نرجع إحنا بيتنا بالغبسية كله تهدم فيه بس الجامع I leave the center humbled by the suffering these people have endured and continue to endure but also inspired by their greater resilience Like this, you like? Ah. Lebne, Lebne, Zaytun. Zaytun. Pandora. Pandora. Nabila and Fatin prepare the food every day. They sit and eat as a family. And this is when most conversations happen. This is their safe place. But you're doing a fried egg? Oh. I put it in and leave it there? Uh. Okay. You like this or this? Yeah. Oh, both. خلاص. اثنين بحب. اثنين بتحب. أهلا وسهلا فيك. طيب اللبن هون طيب كثير بيترو هيدا زعتر زعتر من وين؟ من وين؟ من فلسطين؟ فلسطين كيف حجة؟ حجة بخير إن شاء الله الحجة منيحة والحجة معاي من الستة وخمسين وإلها البيت بلاها معتن لانه الحجه هي عمري وهي حياتي الحجه وان شاء الله تطلع لنا بخير وسلامه وبتيجي على بيتها مبسوطه
this will be my second night sleeping here. One moment is like a very happy, intense, emotional moment. Then suddenly it can be just very depressing realizing where you are. The old people's center felt like a very unique experience to be with, uh, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 old Palestinians, probably all or most of them who were in Palestine before 1948. You get used to it but you don't, um, it's not a normal, a normal life for sure. Um, yeah. Ahmed was the one who challenged me to come here. I want to know about him. I want to see him in his world. I know the strength of Aj Abdullah comes from his childhood and then expulsion from Palestine. He knows what he's waiting for, why he endures what he does. But I wonder about the generation born in the camp. Ahmed shows me another of his many skills when he insists on making me a coffee at his local cafe. He has studied to be a nurse, but is not allowed to practice because he is a Palestinian refugee. His friends, each of them with hopes and dreams and possibilities, are also thwarted at every step because they are Palestinian refugees. Ahmed sings now at weddings inside the camp. That is, his only way to provide for his young family. Ahmed was fortunate to study. Many of his friends did not have this chance. This guy is dance. I wonder what the future holds for this young man. How will they support a family? Do they dream of another life outside the camp? This reminds me of how easy it was for myself and my good friend Jack to get a job. Some things become possible for some purely because of where they were born. Jack got a job working with disadvantaged youth in London. We were laughing at the time when he told us. So you got the job? Yeah. Well, and it was well, thank you. It was well funny. I literally rocked up there and they were all the other people, I didn't get there later, but there were people like there waiting in the foyer. And um, I literally, I was like a little bit older than everyone else. Yeah. So I was really happy, like, and I was I dressed like quite smart. I wore like pointy leather shoes and like suit trousers and a shirt. And everyone else there was in like Air Force Ones and like tatty t-shirts and I was yeah, like you're supposed to be yeah, a exactly uh, and I youth, felt youth, yeah uh, yeah support for it exactly yeah. and then I was like oh no uh, you still got the job though I've got the job I am happy for Jack but right now remembering her privilege hurts Ahmed was prevented from realizing his dream of nursing, but it has not stopped him from volunteering his time 
with the young people of his camp. He's making a real difference in the life of these kids, even while holding on to such a disappointment in his own. To make me look at Ahmed in a new light. I'll try. Yeah, come. You teach me? Yeah, I'll okay. teach you. Come. Put it. Look at my, okay? Okay. 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 Come on. Come on. Bravo, Vitro. Back home, life continues. Despite there being no chance of getting a job, families still value education. I see the youngest generation now filled with potential and brilliance. It is 6 a.m. in the time that Leo Jana, Hajj Abdullah's great granddaughter, has to wake if she is to try and reach the UNRWA school on time. I walk with her as she makes her way through the camp to the place where the bus will pick her up. This is education for the children of the camp. This is what school means. I feel like we're standing in a war zone as we wait for the bus that no one seems to know how long it will be before it comes. There is no sheltered bus stop or seat for the children to sit on if their legs are tired. There is no electronic board to let us know when the next bus will arrive. And the only thing for sure is that there will be more than six minutes between buses. I wonder if I would have had the determination when I was eight years old. Lack of schools and means of transport is not the only threat to the young. The hanging cables is a constant danger, and according to UNRWA, 50 in Burj al-Barajna camp 
have been electrocuted so far. 37 of these lost their lives. I wonder how many people this clinic must provide for. Each child, each mother, has a story that stretches over countless shadows of despair, war and loss. Everyone has faced the realities of dispossession and are refugees. I wanted to know if uh, this is the only uh, clinic in the camp? Yes. Is it the only one? Yes. And it's serving uh, 20,000 people? Uh, about 25,000. 25,000 Palestinians. Does it serve uh, also Syrians? Or no? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I'll see the future from Syria. Yes. The influx of Syrian refugees has doubled the number of people the clinic must now provide for. The people with the least have been the only ones opening their doors to the needy. The good news is that Hajj Abdullah has just got a cold and will recover. But good news is seldom separated from bad here. And Hajj Abdullah learned some news he was fearing. مين بتزور هنا في المكبرة؟ هون بزور جوزي سمير. اه جوزي. كان آه. كبير العيلة يعني عن جد عبد الله اللي احنا قاعدين عنده كان ابنه الكبير. كان شاب ويلبق له. في انا عندي هون عندي ابوي هون وعندي امي هون مدفونة. وفوق ابوي في اخواتي عندي اربعة. اه بنتين وصبيان. دموع is her name. It means tears. I wonder how she remains so strong. Her siblings killed in a civil war and her mother killed by a car at the entrance to the camp after finishing her work as a cleaner. Allah is the forgiveness. So we all die, for example, the people who are killed by the people who are killed by the people who are killed by the people who are killed. إنه أخت مصيتنا هي أم الثانية إنه إذا صار لها شيء لا سمح الله ندفنها فوق أمي. هاي. 
Yeah, I'm in my room. Uh, good to talk to you, finally. What have you been doing today? We went in the morning to the cemetery. A few of the family members here have a few, have some people that passed away. And because uh, and there's so many of them, they can't have a new space where to bury them. They have to bury like three or four people in the same spot. Hajj has been here for 70 years, basically. Really? He's, yeah, he's That's all, nice. he, he, he was living in Palestine when he was 10, when the, when the British were there. How's the family? They're all right. You know, most of the time they're kind of upbeat, but, uh, you know, life is hard here for them. It's hard for the parents to see their children growing up here, knowing as they do that they will have to face a life without any rights as a citizen. Up until now, I have seen on the surface how life is tough for them. But tonight, for the first time, there is a tension in the house that reveals to me something much deeper. أنا ما بستغني عن فلسطين ولا بأرضى بأي جنسية وأنا بطالب كل دول العالم لأسر ما بطالب إلا بحق العودة لفلسطين أنا خليت في لبنان ما بعرف فلسطين بس بحبك كثير بنسمع عنها بنسمع عنها وعم بعلم أولادي إذا أعطاني رب العالمين عمر إن شاء الله بنشوفها إن إحنا ما بنتخلى عن فلسطين زي ما قالوا حق العودة بس الجنسية لنا هلا بهالوقت منيحة بس إحنا الفلسطيني ما فينا نشتغل غير بمهن محصورة يعني ما فينا نفوت مثلا على الدولة ما فينا زي ما قالت نسجل شيء باسم هون نملك بس غير على صعيد مخيم طلاب من جيالي خلصوا جامعات ومهندسين ودكاترة بس ما بشتغلوا أنا تمريض ما في مهنة ما في شغل عشان هيك نحن بحاجة لجنسية إن كانت لبنانية ولا إن كانت غير لبنانية عرفت كيف؟ حتى لو صومالية أو هندية أنا ستة مرضت أنا ستة مرضت من فترة قبل هالمرضى الله يخلينا إياها تاج فوق راسنا يا رب مرضت ممنوع تفوت على المستشفى إلا لما بدك تحط سبعة آلاف دولار سبعة آلاف دولار على باب المستشفى طب الساعة 3 الصبح نحن وين نلاقي 7000 دولار؟ لحتى نفوتها بس على باب المستشفى، ليش؟ لو لبناني كنا فتنا على الضمان، بس فلسطيني ما فيك تفوت. نحن لما نروح على المستشفى هون يو هاف ماني؟ معك مصاري بتفوت مستشفى، ما معك مصاري موت. ما راح حبلة ما راح حبلة خلفت على باب المستشفى ما فوتوها على المستشفى، لأنه ما معها مصاري. ليش؟ لأنك فلسطينية؟ لأنك فلسطيني؟ أنا ما بدي لبنان، أنا بدي أسافر. I have not seen this hurt in Ahmed before. Now I know to what depths of despair existence in this camp can bring a man. The camp is no longer a story for me, pictures I can see in a book or refracted to me from the TV screen, from which I'm removed and can remove myself at any moment. The camp is in me. I wander through the camp and look, images imprinted in me forever, beneath the deadly electrical wires cutting across the skylines and enclosing the treeless streets. The pulsing life of the camp is real, and the kindness and generosity welcoming. So calm. Good. Yeah. As I was wondering one day, I remember my eye being caught by a house in one dusty street of the camp. It was quite beautiful on the outside. It was called Insan, human.
Rooms filled with artistic projects, in a way strangely at odds with the stark and harsh reality of the camp. I wondered if this were some museum, some funded art center for the privileged. I learned from Namer, the chairman of Insan, that this was actually a drug rehabilitation center. No funding came to this center, and it was built upon the ruins of a prison. A remarkably small number of drug offenders live in the community, Namer tells me. But for them, this center has proved to be the way back to the community. For the young Palestinians living in the camp, there is more they can do to resist a life of despair. In the midst of the crowded streets, the kids keep playing football, Marhaba. ensuring their survival. What strikes me most is how, out of the darkness, everyone I meet here is trying to find hope. nurtured by volunteer musicians, is bringing beauty back to an ugly existence. For a brief moment here, these people celebrating together are not refugees at all, but are equal citizens of the world. I feel so lucky to be witness to this. This is a sample from our people, from our camp. For, you, for your visit to our camp. It's very uh, it's big for to us, British man, to come to our camp here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My journey has been a journey of self-discovery. As I walk home with Ahmed, I realize how happy I am to be coming to the door that only six days ago I approached with apprehension and uncertainty. I love drinking tea with the family and helping Nabila and Fatin with the food. I love the sound of the children and seeing them smile and laugh. I want to be their advocate. I want to make what difference I can. I want everyone to feel what I've felt and to see what I've seen. One thing that they kept telling me is that we are just, uh, we're just human, like everyone else. And they just want to live a normal life. And uh, they kept emphasizing that, you know, the, they, they will return one day, and that uh, will happen. And so, although they feel that uh, that there, there is a huge injustice being committed against them, but they're still not going, giving up on, 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 on seeking this, uh, their goal, which is to, to go back to Palestine and to, to live there. It's, it's such a depressing situation, you know. You just yeah, wonder well, how, how on earth we're going to unravel it. It's like a great ball of string that's got into such a mess. The West Bank. This human misery is just... Uh, well, it's, I mean, what annoys me so much is that it's basically ignored by yeah. by international governments and international 
opinion. I mean, there's, you know, it's very, very hard to get an airing for this subject. And to oh, yeah, yes. and that's why one of the, the things I wanted to ask from this meeting is um, if this in this parliament would be so important if we could have perhaps a debate on the issue of Palestinian refugees, if we could have uh, the issue being uh, more at the forefront, mm. it would be very important to to the people living in, in the refugee camps in Lebanon and elsewhere. And especially um, as a British citizen, they, they, they reminded me that uh, Britain has a, a special responsibility. The two parliamentarians, Jenny Tong and Tommy Shepherd, were keen to listen to Hajj Abdullah's story and stories from the camp. But I realized how complicated the Palestinian issue is. Whenever you meet Palestinians in the camps or anywhere else, you always get positive messages from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're always, you know, arranging things, doing things, yeah. having festivals, yeah. carrying on, yeah. making yeah. their lives I, normal, I that, educating their lots. children. The children are educated and educated and educated. That's a wonderful thing. They're very positive, yeah. very positive people, yeah. actually. They're I mean, not going to let their culture die. Right. Oh. Thank 
care of yourself. You too. Don't forget me. I want to call you all day. Write to me. We have uh, my number. Minister aware of families like that of Haj Abdullah Shahata from Kikat in Palestine, who were driven from their homes and prosperous farms 70 years ago and have been living in camps and temporary accommodation in Lebanon since then? And is he aware that the Lebanese government <coughs> continues to restrict Palestinians' right to work, prohibits them from owning property, and refuses access to health care and education, leaving them dependent on UNRWA, who have diminishing funds. Can he really be content to let this continue for another 70 years? Or will the Palestinians be allowed the right of return to their homeland as prescribed in international law? Yeah. 